Hi, welcome to Business Automated. Today I will show you how to automatically create new invoices in Xero for every order you receive from Shopify. Let's get started. All right, so to build this scenario, we will be using a template, which you can find in the description of this video below. So click on the link and then go to the template. And at the bottom, you can click create new scenario from the template. We are using for this a software called Make, which will help us with connecting different APIs. The first step will be to connect to the orders of your Shopify store. So the first step here, you need to add a connection to your Shopify store. In this case, I have already connected this module to my Shopify store, so I can click next. And the next step here, which will be connecting to zero account. So in this case, you need to authenticate your zero account. So what you will do, you will do click add, and then you can specify the name for that connection for, for zero. In this case, we'll go, uh, go ahead with the default and then click save. This will open another window for the authentication. In this window, you need to select what organization you want to connect and click Allow Access. All right, you can see that the new connection has been added, so we can click Continue. In this module, we will create a new contact if it's needed. As you can see, the, the zero account is already connected, so there is nothing to do here, so we click Continue. And in here, we will be putting the necessary variables to be using in the next stage. And as you can see, all those information has been pre-filled by us by the template. So there is nothing to change over here. So you can just click continue. All right, in this case, there's also nothing to do. You will see that this, this module is getting details of the order that has been placed using the order ID from the previous step. So here we can click continue. Here we are reusing the variable that has been created before, which is the ID of the, of the contact that has been created. So we can click continue. And in this case, what we will have at the end, we will have a create a purchase order module, which will actually later change into create an invoice inside of Integromat because there's not too much use for us to be placing an order into zero. So what we'll do, we'll click continue. And at the moment, everything is set up, but we don't want to be creating a purchase order in this case. You can do that, but what we would like to do is create actually an invoice. So what we will do is here is create an invoice. We will connect it here and you can get rid of the older module or just disconnect it. Okay, so now let's go back to the start and let's make sure that everything is connected properly. So as you can see, we're looking only at the open orders. Here you can decide whether you're creating invoices for any orders or only for the orders in, let's say, paid status. So let's do it only in the paid status. And here, this is number of orders that will be processed at the time. So this can be two, which means every time you run the scenario, it will be only two, but you can actually set much bigger number like hundred. So all of the orders are being processed at that time here, just for the sake of demo, we'll be using one so that we are processing one by one, the, the orders that we have been placed in our shop. So let's click okay over here. Now, the next step is search for contacts. So we need to add a bit more configuration to this module. Next, first step is to select the organization. Probably you will have only one. In our case, it's the demo company. Now we need to decide how will we be searching for unique customers in our database. And we can be using this based on the fields inside of Zero. And in our case, this is email, name, or account number. We will use email in most cases. This is what will be coming from Shopify, plus it's always a unique identifier. So here we will say email and equals, and this will be equal to the email that has been used here in this setup, okay? Maximum number of accounts, one, because we only need one customer that this order will be linked to click OK. And here, as you can see, there is a junction. And what the filter does is it says that in case contact does not exist, create a new contact in zero. But in all cases, there is no filter. In all cases, that uh, junction will lead into the next step, which is get order. Okay, but here 
when it says create uh, order, you can see we are comparing whether there is any contact ID returned from the step six. Let's keep it like this. And inside of create contact, we need to add also some more configuration. Okay. And the only thing that we will be adding here, we can add more, obviously more information, will be the name. And the name will come from the previous module here. So we will use the customer name. We have to find the part when we have the customer and we'll use customer first name and then make a space and use customer last name. We can also add the other names, but what is crucial to add is the email. So we'll also need the email. You'll see customer and email, which will be the same as the email used for the order here. Customer email. And that's everything for now. Here, instead of set variable, we'll do a different trick. So we will delete this module here and we'll also delete the module get variable here. And we'll basically clone this module and put it over here because what we'll do here, we will search again for the customer with the email coming from our order. And this means that if the customer has not been found here, then this customer was created. So by the time we get to this step, the customer will be already existing in our system. Okay, so this is the name of the customer. Everything is set. Here we should receive the, the ID of the customer. Now, let me explain to you what is happening in this step. So in this step, the first thing is getting the details of the order. So from here, the make module will pull all the data about the order. And as you will see here, it will split out all the information from the line items into individual, uh, into individual uh, line items, and then we'll aggregate them using the aggregator module here. And at the moment, we don't have any specific data structure set here and, and so on. It will work out of the bat. So I'll show you first the basic version. I have to worry about this. So let's click cancel. Now let's make sure this one works. All right, demo company. Okay, this is fine. We don't need the router here, so we can delete the router. And now let's set up the create order part. Okay, we are not creating a bill. We are creating an invoice accounts receivable. Now, the next step is to add the contact ID, which will be coming from the module that we have added at the very end. So don't select the previous contact ID, select the contact ID from here. Okay, and right now as a line items, instead of adding the line items individually, because as you can see, this way we can add only one line item. In this case, we would use map, and as a content of this, we'll use the output of the array aggregator over here. So we'll use this array over here. Okay. So that's it. So that means the whole flow is completed. Let's press the auto align and let's test it. We have created this uh, choosing to start from the beginning. So let's click choose from where to start, click all. And then let's press run once. So you can see that the first order has been processed. And here inside of that order, how many line items we have? We have two line items and you can see line item number one and line item no number two. Okay, everything has been completed without uh, any issue. The new customer has been added over here and that customer has been found. So let's go back to zero and see whether this invoice has been created. So I will refresh it. And you can see that there is a new invoice over here. And inside of this invoice, you have two line items exactly corresponding to what we have set inside of uh, make and the prices are correct. And yeah, everything is set uh, the same way as it was in done inside of the order. Now let's go back and I'll show you some additional customization details that you potentially could be using over here. So step number one would be if you go to the data structure, you can select line items here and you could possibly add some additional elements that you would like to add to the line items like a discount rate, 
discount amount or any additional tracking and so on but that's optional and when you go over here then as additional settings when you click on the advance you can select for example a date it could be today dates or it could be a date from the from the order so you can say for example the updated date which in this case will be the date when the order has been created or if you are not certain about this you can just use the date functions from here and you can use now due date in most cases this is uh, already paid so it can be also now and you can customize other elements like the tax type uh, invoice number if you'd like to have some sort of format that is following shopify and the reference you can add other elements currency and so on and what is most interesting here is the status so you can either create it as a draft which is the default or you can create it as a auto authorized and confirmed invoice straight away all right you can also select an option that will send the invoice directly to the customer so let's test it and let's press run once again we don't have any orders here so let's choose where to start again and let's choose manually the last order all right because we have uh, specified the date we also need to set the due date so in this case this is gonna be now the reason for that is that we aren't creating the invoice that is in authorized status not in a due in not in a draft status let's press run once again and you can also see that uh, because we are actually creating the authorized status we also need to add the tax type and we need to add account code and so on so these elements will be here inside of the array aggregator we will now need to go to the line items and we will have to select the account code account code will be the account that corresponds to the accounting definition of uh, of the product so in this case we'll put 200 because this is something that we know that this will be 200 we'll, we'll press 200 here and the tax code this is something that we need to check from zero so let's click ok over here and then let's go here and i will slightly destroy that but we will not save the changes so let's add line items and let's double check here so for the account code we were looking for sales you see sales and then let's change it to map you see this is 200 and for the tax code in this case let's select 20 percent on income so if we change it to map we see that the code for this particular tax is output two. so let's don't save the changes here let's click cancel and then let's go back here to the array aggregator and now we know that the tax code should be output two. so let's copy paste it here okay and let's see whether this will work right now got it let's check the invoice here all right and you can see that the invoice has been created it has been approved it has a status awaiting payment and it has also been sent to the recipient you can see that the account has been marked as sales and also the tax rate has been set all right i hope this scenario was useful for you and if so please uh, like and subscribe and uh, sign up for more business automation videos thank you guys